Tuesday, May 24th. You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. The most remarkable part of the weather forecast actually is probably the beyond the seven-day forecast cycle. This isn't really part of the forecast, but let's just go over this anyways. The European computer model is showing that temperatures in Massachusetts, part of the Northeast, this excludes parts of Maine. This does not include Caribou, Maine, but parts of the Northeast, including Providence, Rhode Island, Mid-Atlantic area, but especially up in the northern areas, like perhaps New York, Long Island, New York, those areas. European computer model shows temperatures reaching 100 degrees next Thursday. Now, the problem with making a forecast that temperatures will reach 100 degrees next Thursday is the fact that the GFS computer model shows unseasonably cool temperatures, temperatures low 60s, if even that. Now, for mainstream forecasters, uh, pretty much if you look on the some of the mainstream websites, you'll see that they are forecasting neither what the European computer model says or the GFS model says. They're forecasting something like in between with highs in the low 80s or Baltimore highs in the upper 80s. The question is, why are they doing that? Why not go ahead with one of the computer models? And I wanted to give a possible explanation to this. And it's like this. If you look really at the European computer model, you'll see high temperatures are generally forecasted to be in the upper 90s for places like Massachusetts. But some low hundreds in those areas when you get to next Thursday, even Wednesday already. But if you look at the dew points, you'll see dew points are really mid 50s, maybe low 60s. So. Now, if you were to raise the dew points, if you want to make the forecast match climatology, if you want to make the forecast match climatology to some extent, what you can do is raise the dew points and drop the temperatures. Dew points is a form of energy just like the temperatures. If you raise the dew points, then the temperatures are going to drop. So what they have done is they've raised the dew points, something like upper 60s to low 70s dew points, and then dropped the temperatures by the equivalent number of degrees with highs, let's say, in Baltimore, upper 80s and low 90s. I think Massachusetts, they have it a little bit lower. So now what you have is in terms of energy, the forecast matches the European computer model. It also somewhat matches climatology, at least for the mid-Atlantic area. When you get up to Massachusetts, it doesn't exactly match climatology, but it is a reasonable forecast to make a to say highs will be in the 80s over there. I'm not sure they're saying that warm. Uh, I don't have it on me right now. But temperatures will be warmer than normal, according to mainstream weather forecasters. The GFS model probably is showing a flow off the ocean, and that's why there's going to be so much coolness. But the GFS model is showing it to be cool even well inland locations as well. So I, I think it's a brilliant idea to go ahead and forecast humid conditions with high temperatures only upper 80s to near 90 degrees instead of the slightly humid air, if even that, with and highs in the upper 90s to low 100s. But we will wait and see what's going to happen. Not just wait and see, but it'll be interesting to see how this European computer model plays out over the next few days and how the GFS model, but I'm more interested in the European computer model. When you go into the Midwest, the European computer model has had tremendous accuracy, like really a lot, a lot of accuracy, even that many days out, especially recently. I don't know what the story is for the East Coast. In general, the European computer model is considered more accurate, but not always. Here in the Midwest, it, it, recently it seems almost like always and it has an extremely high accuracy. So... Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the weather that's going on now over the next few days. We'll get to now in a little bit. First, let's just talk about what's going on in a few days. So we're working backwards over here. So we have a wave of heat, a one-day wave of heat. But listen to this because it's not going to play out to be a one-day wave of heat for most of the country. It's a one-day wave of heat that starts out like in the Idaho area or so. It hits them about Friday, actually Thursday. I believe with high temperatures going well into the 80s. Now, right after the temperatures go into the 80s, temperatures are going to drop a lot. Highs in the 60s, maybe even cooler than that. And right before 
temperatures go into the 80s. Temperatures will also, high temperatures will also be in the 50s or 60s. Now that one day wave of heat moves to east as weather usually does. It moves from west to east. Weather almost always does. It moves from west to east. So it's going to move from the west to the east. High temperatures hit the 80s. Peak warming occurs in places like western North Dakota and South Dakota areas around there. Peak warming occurs on Friday. High temperatures in the 80s. So you go from the 80s in Idaho on Thursday to the 80s in the Deco- western parts of the Dakotas on Friday. Then that wave of heat continues and on Saturday on Shabbos high temperatures going to the 80s for the eastern parts of North Dakota there probably will be some 90s there as well Okay, now that wave of warmth then spreads into the rest of the Midwest. But here's what happens when it gets into the Midwest. So Sunday, we have high temperatures going into the 80s. The thing is, when it hits the Midwest, it's not going to go away. It's just going to remain in the Midwest for several days, for at least several days. Temperatures getting a little bit warmer on Monday. Many, many locations seeing high temperatures in the low 90s, upper 80s to low 90s. The heat continues for two Tuesday, Wednesday, and the question is when will that trough with the dip in the jet stream, which is going to hang out in North Dakota, South Dakota, those areas, when is that going to make it over here? Snow falls when you get further west into Wyoming towards the, uh, on the back side of this low pressure system that's moving northeast over the weekend. Actually, a series of low pressure systems uh, over the next seven to ten days, just constantly moving up the plains. The, the first, we already have a couple of them right now. One is over the Rio Grande Village, Texas area that's developing. Today, we have another one further north. That system is going to be responsible for bringing. Uh, lots of rain, severe weather potential for over the next couple of days for the, the Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas area. Uh, there's actually a word, uh, a word that for those three states and it like Arkin Tex law or law to whatever it is it you know it defines those three states in particular and like uh, Shrevesport Louisiana has a good severe potential a good weather uh, severe weather potential for tomorrow we also have severe thunderstorm watches today in Texas tornado potential possible as we go into tomorrow in fact Funnel clouds are even a possibility in the Chicago area tomorrow, perhaps even Thursday when you get into South Bend, Indiana. But the National Weather Service is mechalic. They make a, a distinction between funnel clouds and tornadoes. These are land spouts. They're a little bit different. They're not really dangerous. According to what the National Weather Service said a year ago or eight months ago, they're not really dangerous. The funnel clouds, these, they're called sometimes cold weather funnel clouds, although these are not going to be uh, cold weather funnel clouds, but land spouts. Uh, there's also the possibility for a tornado. So we have a marginal risk for severe weather tomorrow, says the Storm Prediction Center in Oklahoma for parts of the Midwest, which include the Chicago area. A large part of the Midwest will see thunderstorms tomorrow. That's because the low pressure system in the plains moves north, swings a warm front through the Midwest. Warm and humid conditions take overtake the area tomorrow on Wednesday, followed by a cold front that moves through on Thursday, perhaps later in the day, allowing for another day of thunderstorms, especially when you get a little bit east of Chicago. The timing of the cold front will be questionable or at least will create a questionable uh, high temperatures for parts of the Midwest on Thursday. Uh, But places like in northern Indiana will likely see another warm and humid day. Chicago perhaps in the morning, and I'm not sure what's going to be happening in the afternoon. The real cool weather here in the Chicago area comes in on Friday, the same day that Idaho is, not just actually, Idaho is heating up on Thursday. West North Dakota, those areas just to our west, will be seeing high temperatures in the 80s here in chicago high temperatures in the 60s maybe even cooler when you get close to the lake when you head into saturday and shabbos shabbos you see high temperatures get a little bit warmer but the heat really starts to move in on sunday and it continues for a large part of the midwest places east of the plains even perhaps the eastern parts of the plains 
we'll see high temperatures in the 80s and 90s for the next uh, for the first several days of next week. Then on Monday, you'll see mid to upper 80 degree heat moving into the East Coast. Thursday is questionable. There's a front that's going to be situated just to the south of Baltimore and Washington, D.C., as usual, and they're going to be struggling with that forecast. Uh, the forecast highs, especially on Thursday, are going to be a big struggle to figure out. But by Monday, when that wave of warmth from the Midwest also moves into the East Coast, the temperatures also are going to reflect summer. For most locations, perhaps there might be an ocean breeze that develops on the ocean side. But we're talking about a large part of the East Coast, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as well for the East Coast. Then a cold front that will be in the Midwest on Thursday makes its way to the East Coast on Friday. But this is beyond the seven-day forecast cycle. So the accuracy really goes down. Actually, after Tuesday, I noticed that... Uh, up through Tuesday, there's consistency between the GFS model and the European computer model. I mean, I mean, all that tells you is it just tells you how much confidence to have in U the European computer model. And that's one of the reasons why people are monitoring, people do monitor the GFS model, despite the fact the European computer model is the more accurate model, just to tell you how much confidence to have in the European computer model. It goes up through Tuesday. After Tuesday, there's a large differences between those two models. So the confidence goes down. You know, that's for the East Coast. The confidence, that's for Massachusetts. The confidence starts to go down. Temperatures are warm through Tuesday for the Northeast, but really in the New England area. Let's just say the New England area, temperatures are warm through Tuesday, and the European computer model continues to forecast warmth, a lot of warmth, even beyond Tuesday. The GFS model doesn't. But to, in order to uh, satisfy the European computer model and climatology, the European computer model is extreme. As we mentioned, temperatures reaching 100 Thursday and perhaps Wednesday as well for parts of the New England area. So in order to satisfy climatology and the European computer model, you just lower those temperatures by 10, 15 degrees and up the dew points by many, many degrees, and you end up with a forecast that is more reflective of climatology. It, it, it fits better into climatology. It's still rather warm, but it does fit better into climatology. The GFS model ends up being right, so that, then uh, the temperatures are going to have to be greatly lower during that uh, time period. So... The severe weather outbreak risk going back here to the Midwest for tomorrow, marginal means there's a 5 to 15% chance for severe weather anywhere within a 25-mile radius. Thursday, there's less of a chance for severe weather for a large part of the Midwest, but a higher chance for severe weather in northern Indiana, and we have a really slight chance for a tornado really anywhere. The highest chances for severe weather are going to be south of Chicago. But according to the Storm Prediction Center, it's pretty much Chicago and even north of Chicago as well. Now moving into the desert southwest, Phoenix, Arizona is actually going to see a big spike in temperatures on Thursday and Friday. I don't think there's anything record-breaking that's going on. But where they are breaking records is in central California. There's record-breaking heat over there where temperatures are going into the hundreds. I'm a Relo, Texas. That's I'm a Relo, Texas. We'll be experiencing record near record heat for Saturday. Near record heat for Saturday. Rio Grande Village has really high temperatures, but not record heat. Now here in the Midwest, the other thing to mention is the solar insolation, I-N-S-O-L-A-T-I-O-N, which this time of the year, this is going to be a big shocker to many of you if you haven't heard previous podcasts of mine. 
The highest level of solar insulation is around 38 degrees north latitude, and in about a month, it's going to be about 40 degrees north latitude, perhaps even a little bit further north than that. So in the wintertime, you know, the further south you go, the more, the stronger the sun is, the more heat you get from the sun. In the summertime, it's complicated because although the further north you go, the sun is not as direct, but the further north you go, the days are longer. So the question is, how much heat are you really getting from the sun? So one could say the further north you go, the more solar insulation there is, but that is not true. The long days do not counteract the sun because the sun is not strong enough. So the area actually with highest solar insulation on June 21st is the Arctic Circle, but not north of the Arctic Circle. It is the Arctic Circle, but the area of second highest solar insulation is right around 40 degrees north latitude. And then it gradually drops south from there. And you'll notice the hottest temperatures here in the country are right around 36 degrees north latitude, maybe 38 degrees north latitude many times. 36 degrees north latitude is where Death Valley, California is. Realize places along 40 degrees north latitude only experience maximum solar insulation for a few weeks. But when you get further south than that, you have a couple months of very high solar insulation. So you can get really hot. You'll see temperatures get really hot, but also geography plays a very big role. The low elevation, the deserts area, and things like that. But the solar insulation does not get as high when you go into South Florida and places like that. The reason this is being brought up is because it perhaps explains the weather map today to some extent of how high temperatures in International Falls, Minnesota were forecasted to go into the 70s, but just a couple hundred miles south of that, maybe more than a couple hundred, you go into Des Moines, Iowa, high temperatures are only in the 50s. And then even in Oklahoma, high temperatures are only in the 60s. So the solar insulation explains this in an indirect way because the real reason has to do with the jet stream, but the jet stream is connected to the solar insulation. So it just isn't as direct. The cause and effect isn't as clear, but there is a connection. So the jet stream goes further north as you get more solar insulation. So the International Falls area has warmer temperatures than when you go further south. I would imagine clouds are also a very big part of this. One other thing we're going to mention in regards to the dew points is that the soil, the moisture in the soil is at maximum capacity over parts of the southern Midwest right now. And that will explain the high dew points, which will be headed into the Midwest next week. The Chicago area, it's not a maximum potential, but the winds will be coming from the south. So dew points will likely hit the low 70s when you head into Memorial Day. So... Thunderstorm chances are possible really any time during the heat and humidity. As of now, it's questionable how capped the environment will be. Any thunderstorm that does develop in heat like that usually has the potential to be severe. And especially over the next few days, thunderstorms that do develop have the potential to be severe. And that goes for the East Coast as well, even though temperatures might only be in the upper 70s in a mid-Atlantic area, it will still feel like summer as pointed out before and the thunderstorms have that chance of becoming severe. But generally speaking, we're talking about a drizzle and a mist for places like Baltimore. Uh, we're going to go through a day of just a mist, a drizzle and stuff like that. In the Chicago area, we're going to start to see rain, possibly even heavy rain, move in sometime tomorrow. A slight chance late tonight, but sometime tomorrow, at least on and off showers, thunderstorms possible late in the afternoon. Thunderstorms possible really any time, but the strongest storms would occur late in the afternoon into Wednesday night. On and off showers again for Thursday. 
and then the cold front moves through. It will feel like summer in Chicago Wednesday and per perhaps Thursday morning. And then Friday, the cooler air comes in, but the heat returns for Sunday, Monday onward for next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and might come to somewhat of an end on Thursday. New Delhi, India, just to throw this in, is experiencing high humidity again. It is almost June, so the monsoon season is coming up. But it's going to be off and on, the high humidity, and the temperatures will also go up and down with highs ranging from the mid-90s to the mid-110s, probably depending on what the dew point is. Well, the good news is that we're going to be seeing great swimming weather this Memorial Day weekend, especially east of the plains or even the eastern parts of the plains. Uh, when you get into Sunday and then Monday with much of the country, when you're east of that area going into the 80s and even many places low 90s. Now, Caribou, Maine is not going to be getting that warm. Perhaps even the whole state of Maine, that's something that needs to be looked into. They're going to stay probably in the upper 60s and low 70s, but the the rest of the country, as well, anywhere east of the lee side of the Rockies, or especially from the eastern plains eastward, is going to see really good swimming weather. Thank you for listening. I wish everyone a wonderful day and enjoy the Memorial Day weekend.